you like making history? And yes, you for making history. So I got a question for you. So what do you think about the uh, uh, possibilities if our uh, current uh, president, the most popular person of all time, what if he uh, uh, ends up deciding to step down and mm-hmm. we experience uh, making history, the first female <laughs> black president in America, Kamala Harris, uh, how ecstatic would you be about that monumental uh, moment if that were to happen? I would be disappointed. Really? <laughs> why, why would you be disappointed? Because she's a disaster. She is, she doesn't, she doesn't, she, she, this would be a, the worst thing that could happen to this country. Why is that? Because she's not competent. She just. How did, she, we, how did but, she make but, it to but, the top though? How did she make it to being a VP? Well. I mean, some would say she worked very hard to get to where yeah, she's at right now. Yeah, she worked at being black, right. And that's what got her elevated. No, I just that that shows you the worst of what, what 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 race grievance looks like. That he and and any time uh, Newsom, the governor of California, says I'm going to appoint a black woman. What is that? What what do you mean you're going to appoint a black woman? You're not saying I'm going to appoint the most competent person. And and to me, it shows you how how degraded the whole issue of race has become in America. It's become it's become worse than any than, than it's ever been, I think. So you wouldn't be ecstatic about Kamala? No, I would not be. Well, Pat and I both came from California, and people that lived in California will tell you that when she was attorney general, um, how she abused the three strikes law. And the three strikes law, um, along with the um, determination that if you had two ounces of marijuana or some level, they would say intent to distribute because of the quantity. And to be tough on crime, you take everybody, even minor possessions, you put them in prison. And she was very good at that. And she used to speak that uh, very loudly. And those of us who are in California know that 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 three strikes laws may have been well intended at, at one level, but what it did was it disproportionately, not just in jail, 14 days jail at county, disproportionately imprisoned um, black men in California. And it perpetuated... And by the way, when they went to prison, unfortunately, what goes on there is kind of like crime college. And then they come out. They're not employable. So what do they turn to? Other criminal enterprises because it's where it goes. But we all see her as incredibly disingenuous about what she what she did. Oh, you you call yourself a progressive, but you also want to appear tough on crime. And she'll claim that, well, we did this or that and these little programs. But the programs that she would announce were tokenism. You know, we're going to give um, gym membership cards once they get out of uh, prison. Well, they've been lifting weights for five years in prison. Why do they need, you know, and it was it was tokenism and it was pandering and it was dancing on both sides of the political line, depending on who she was speaking to, for the purpose of electability. But the real victim in all this were these citizens who maybe made a mistake, maybe were in possession, but it certainly wasn't distribution. And, but they used the three strikes law for electability and had a devastating impact on the populace. Yeah, I just think, as again, as a veteran of the civil rights movement, nothing is more disheartening than this whole notion that that social justice today has been defined that for blacks, that you must dumb down standards to moments a black walks into the door. That, that I gave examples in our books about the Golden 13, where we pursued excellence. We didn't ask, Jackie Robinson didn't ask, well, because blacks were denied access to baseball, that four strikes and you're out if you're black. Jim Brown and other other football players didn't say, well, since blacks were denied access to the NFL, that blacks only have to run eight yards to get a first down. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? (laughs) (laughs) You know, we we didn't we didn't add no we we met we met the standards. In fact, that you know, but one thing that I think I'm going to do, and I and I've taken this task on, is that if we can just get rid of white guilt, I think the whole country can can take a sigh of relief and get improved. That's why I have become a a a, a, a self certified racial exorcist. Exorcist, racial yes, sir. exorcist. Racial exorcist. So I absolve you from the sins of slavery and Jim Crow. Wow. wow. I think I'm thinking about charging maybe fifty dollars for a certificate. 
so for, I can get a little race hustle. Up. Yeah, for, I want to get in on the race hustle too. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Anheuser Busch gives you a spot where you're. Yeah, maybe at. so. You know, I mean, it's thirty to forty million years. It's a but, nice situation but, to be in. Bob Woodson can. I got a. Uh, I'm. I'm. I can't be guilty of race. Bob gave me an absolution from it. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.